Good morning, guys. This is Tina. Welcome to Dirt Road Believer. It's early on a Saturday morning, and I'm so happy to wake up and get to be with you through a time of devotion today. So I'm glad you're with me. This is this is going to be the perfect way to kick off my Saturday before chores and obligations and all that stuff. So um, if I look a little tired. It's because, you know, my life is like yours. Super busy. We were out late last night at a ball game. And I think back to last week's devotion. And I remember the greatest worry on my mind at that time was, are the hurricanes going to keep us from going to the beach? <laughs> that was my biggest worry. Well, a lot can change in a very short amount of time. And um, unfortunately... The, there were other things that happened that have taken precedence. We did get to go to the beach, but we also learned of tragedy in our community. Uh, we learned of diagnoses that were not good. Um, you know, there have been just a host of things coming at us that have been cause for sorrow and for grief. And so today, I want to take a look at possibly the saddest chapter in the Bible, uh, Lamentations. So we're going to get into that, but I don't want you to think this is going to be all mopey and depressive. There is such hope in this message, probably more hope than you'll find in any other book right in the mid, right smack dab in the middle of Lamentations. So I think after today, you're going to get some more perspective on what is Lamentations all about and you are gonna find a great hope in today's devotion. So do not leave me. Uh, I'm gonna give you a quick video of our little trip to the beach. We had such a good time. And if you see um, a stranger in the video that's not our friends or family that you normally see, uh, that is my son's friend that he took with him to the beach. So enjoy this video and I'll be right back with Lamentate on this.
Okay, welcome back to today's devotion, Lamentate on This. You're going to learn a lot more about this book today than you probably have ever known before. This is a short book um, in the Old Testament, towards the end of the Old Testament, and it's just five chapters long. You can read it, no problem. And Lamentations comes from the word lament. A lament is um, a passionate expression of grief born from great sorrow. So we're going to find out what were these laments about. And here's another cool thing about um, Lamentations. It's very poetic. In fact, the first four chapters are an acrostic. You may remember acrostics from elementary school where you take a word and each um, stanza of the poem or sentence or whatever starts with the letter, uh, the first letter um, in that word or each letter in that word. So the acrostic chapters one through four, they are laments, they're poetic um, expressions of grief, and each one starts with the first letter of, or each letter of the um, Hebrew alphabet. So it is a very poetic book, but, and, and why are they lamenting? Okay, this isn't just a person lamenting over bad news. This is an entire people lamenting. And they're lamenting because Jerusalem is being plucked away. The Babylonians have moved in. And what the Israelites thought was the surest thing that they had, which was the kingdom of Jerusalem, it is being torn apart. People are being exiled. They're being taken away to Babylon. And it is just a time of... They're, they're literally seeing <clears throat> their history, their culture, their spirituality just disintegrate before their eyes. Loved ones being torn away and taken away and killed. And I mean, you talk about, um, you know, just a time of sorrow and grief. But here's the deal. They, the, Jerusalem had been warned a lot, okay? And so all of this was the consequence of sin. But God does not allow any sort of grief, sorrow, suffering without compassion in the back of his head, mind, without restoration for the future in store. So um, I'm not going to read all five chapters, but I think you should this week. And I think at the forefront of this chapter, or at this the forefront of this book, you should consider the verses that we are going to read today. So smack dab in the middle of these laments, these expressions of just unbelievable sorrow that the Jews are going through, we find some of the most famous words in our faith. Great is your faithfulness. Mercies in you each morning. That comes from Lamentations. So let's read. We're going to start in Lamentations chapter 3, and I'm going to start in verse 19. Remember my affliction and my holiness, the wormwood and the poison. I continually remember them, and I have become depressed. Yet I call this to mind, and therefore I have hope. Because of the Lord's faithful love, we do not perish, for his mercies never end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. I say, the Lord is my portion, therefore I will put my hope in him. Now guys, sometimes I think, and I know I have, we get mercies and blessings mixed up, okay? We think that God's mercy should look like, oh, we wake up great every day. We feel good. You know, there's nothing bad happening. But guys, I'm going to tell you, God's mercies show up the most in times of trouble, in times of anguish, in times of lament. And I've come to pray this prayer a lot when I'm praying over people who are going through such sorrow, such grief. I, I've learned to pray this, God, show them gifts of mercy. Even in this horrible time that they're going through, 
just let them know that you're there by giving them these gifts of mercy. And a lot of times we don't really recognize mercy until we are in times like this. Even though Jerusalem was going through the absolute worst, um, it's still recorded that they were finding mercies anew every day. He had not left them. He had not forsaken them. He was still there and his faithful love was still present. It hadn't perished. Your mercies are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. We don't know officially the author of this book, but most scholars say that it's Jeremiah, the weeping prophet. And so for Jeremiah to go through all these laments and then right in the middle of them to say, but you know what, God, I'm still seeing your mercies every day. You are so faithful to your people. That takes a person of faith see that. That takes a person who's connected to God, who can see those little gifts of mercy along the way. As horrible as things may seem, God is still giving mercies. And I'll tell you, this, this is a hard verse to swallow. We go down to 31 through 33 of chapter 3, and it says, For the Lord will not reject us forever, even if he causes suffering he will show compassion according to the abundance of his faithful love, for he does not enjoy bringing affliction or suffering on mankind. Ooh, mm, causes suffering. That's that translation. Here's how I think of that. Sin has consequences. God warns us of those consequences. And in his sovereignty, God will even use the devil to bring about suffering, but not without compassion and not without our good in mind. And you say, well, that sounds, that doesn't sound much like a loving God. Look, God is a loving God. He is a compassionate God. He is also a just God. And I know for myself, maybe for you too, I think I can do it. I'm in control, I got this, and God is saying, no sister, <laughs> you surrender to me, okay? You surrender to me because that pride that I tend to um, wanna cling to, that, that, that I can make this through on my own, God will even bring about or allow things to happen so that I am reminded, no, I'm in control. Lean on me. I have your good in mind. I, and sometimes it takes that thing, that um, thing that causes suffering and laments to get me to where I need to be so that I can begin to see his hand at work, so that I can begin to see his mercies in you each day. And here's what I want to say to you today. This has been one of those burning things all week that I just couldn't wait to get out to you. Jerusalem thought they had it together. They had a kingdom. They had a government. They had, they had everything intact. And then they slowly begin to see it. Somebody needs to hear this today. You thought you had it all figured out. You thought everything was clicking and rolling in your life. And then all of a sudden, you hear the brakes screech. And you begin to see this go and this go. And, and, and what's happening? Why the grief? Why the sorrow? Why, why is this happening? I'm going to tell you this. I have come to learn this, and I've been through some junk, okay? Nothing gets to me without it first flowing through the fingers of my God. He will allow things to refine you, to redefine you, to give you purpose, to... Um, you know, break you of that pride and those things that you're clinging to that he's saying, no, I need you to surrender to me. So guys, if you are in a time like Jerusalem where everything's just falling apart and you don't understand why is this happening? Why is God letting this happen? I can promise you he has not left you. He has not forsaken you. His faithfulness is sure. His mercies are in you every morning. 
great is his faithfulness. And I want you to say, the Lord is my portion, therefore I will put my hope in him. He's God, we're not. We don't understand a lot of things that go on in our lives, a lot of uh, loss, a lot of hurt, a lot of pain that is, that is allowed in our lives. But even in our suffering, he will show compassion according to the abundance of his faithful love. For he does not enjoy bringing affliction or suffering on mankind. So I promise you, if you're going through a time of suffering, if you're going through a time of why is this happening, he's right there. And it says that he's going to show compassion according to his the abundance of his faithful love. Guys, it's more abundant than anything you can imagine. It doesn't run out. There is no bottom. It is continual and it is so much bigger than we can ever imagine. So I want to encourage you guys, lamentate on this. <laughs> there's going to be grief. There's going to be sorrow. There's going to be pain this side of heaven, but he is faithful. Great is his faithfulness. His mercies are on you every morning. And if you haven't seen them, then I want to challenge you that maybe you're not looking because he is, even in the midst of your suffering, even in the midst of your grief and mourning, he is bringing about little gifts of mercy along the way. Don't miss them. They're there, okay? If you're going through a time of suffering, pain, loss, mourning, I'm praying for you this week. That's my, that's my um, promise to you is that this week I'm lifting you up along with so many others that I know right now who are in this same position of lamentation, lamenting, grief, that I'm going to lift you up this week and I'm going to trust that God is giving you little gifts of mercy along the way to give you hope and to show you that he has not forgotten about you and he doesn't enjoy the suffering that you're going through, but his, his intention to you is compassion, it is love, and it is a restoration because your joy is coming back. Keep reading, okay? He didn't forget Jerusalem. You can go visit it today. <laughs> it is a place of prayer. It is a place of joy. It is a place that his people are still there. They were brought back. They were reconnected. They were reunited and restored in full, just as he has plans to restore you in full. Guys, if this devotion has meant something to you, praise God because he led you here. I heard from a viewer last week who was like, uh, nothing besides the Holy Spirit led me to this video today because um, I, I don't know, I've never seen you before, but you popped up and this is exactly what I needed. So if that's you, give this channel a thumbs up. Um, that does help this channel. Also sharing videos, um, subscribing, of course, all helps the ministry of Dirt Road Believer. Guys, I hope you have a wonderful day. Praying for you guys. Praying for you guys that are in the middle of lemon, your own lamentation right now. Guys, I love you. I thank you so much for being a part of this ministry and supporting Dirt Road Believer and helping get the message of the gospel out to others. Have an awesome day. And here we are in the middle of September. And I'll see you again next week. Until then, slow down. Take the dirt road. Over.